How you folks doing again? Once again, this is Dr. Harry Canales, and joining me today, and you'll see here shortly, is Dr. John Heyer. Last time, if uh, we all recall, we were talking about good posture, and we wanted to show what good posture can lead to, and later we'll show what poor posture can ultimately lead to, other than, of course, in a human, pain. And we're talking about pain and chronic pain in this series. But, again, we're talking about these two large buildings. And the challenge is that buildings with very, very small footprints have in maintaining an erect posture without falling over. The same type of challenges that these very large buildings have are the same type of challenges that the human being has in maintaining good posture. So ultimately, when we widen the footprint or the base, it makes it much easier for the human body to remain erect. Same with these buildings. Unfortunately, we have two, two legs that are very slender and a body that's very erect and slender, so it poses these challenges. So what has science allowed for, in a sense? Science has allowed for, in these very large buildings, what's called a tuned mass damper. These are balls in the upper floors of the building, sometimes in the 91st or 89th floor of the upper floors of the building, that will actually counteract the sway and motions of a very large building. And this bowling ball analogy will give one an indication of what actually happens with a mass damper analogy. When your body sways in one direction, the damper will actually sway in the opposite direction to maintain balance. Now we're looking at things from a frontal view here, left and right. But what you have to keep in mind is that these buildings, as well as the human body, actually are moving three-dimensionally. They're rotating in all dimensions to make this balance take place. The more imbalance we have, the more coordination of muscles that need to take place to maintain balance. And the one main deficit with this coordination of muscles in the human body is that the human body has muscles at certain movements that should be working, while other movements have the same muscles not working. In other words, when we're holding a garage door open, we don't want the closing mechanism to be working. So if we're closing the garage door and somebody's trying to hold it elevated, over time, the mechanism will break down. Likewise, the opposite is true. So when we have poor posture or we have chronic problems in an ankle, shoulder, hip, or lower jaw, these problems will lead to protective responses that will force muscle recruitment from other parts of the body to maintain posture in this erect manner. So this is an up-close view of what this mass damper is. Now, why do we talk about this mass damper? The reason we're trying to talk about this mass damper is to give the audience an indication and an understanding of what the lower jaw's role is in relation to the human body. And mainstream science has discounted the role of the lower jaw in relation to the body's upper posture. In fact, most of the medical and dental community don't even believe that the lower jaw has anything to do with posture relating to the whole body. What we're going to find here today, and I'm going to show you some pictures here in a little bit, is how that relationship actually is true, the lower jaw in relation to the upper body. So we're not saying that the lower jaw is a mass damper, and we're not saying that the human body is a, is a superstructure, or nor that it should be. But what we're doing is we're making a symbolic representation, an analogy for easier understanding of how this lower jaw is tied in to the rest of the body. And as such, we'll be able to unlock some of the mysteries on why chronic pain can be alleviated non-surgically with the right thought process. And at this point in time, we would like to talk a little bit more about the TMJ and just how much we use this lower jaw. And Dr. Heyer, I'm going to introduce Dr. Heyer here, uh, by far the best chiropractor that we have in the Chicagoland area. And Dr. Heyer and I have been treating chronic pain cases pretty consistently here for the last five years. And uh, for a chiropractor, he knows quite a bit more about the lower jaw than most chiropractors do. Probably a little bit more about the lower jaw than some dentists do. So I want to pass the, uh, the mic over here to Dr. Heyer so you can learn more about the TMJ. Thanks, Dr. Heyer. Thanks, Doug. Appreciate it. Hey, guys. I'm back again. Okay, let's talk about the TMJ. Now, some people use terms incorrectly. Some people will say, well, Doc, I have TMJ. We all have TMJ. We have two of them. TMJ stands for Temporal Mandibular Joint. Unless you've had some strange issue or injury, we all have two TMJs. What we're referring to is TMD temporal mandibular dysfunction and that comes from the joint itself not working properly. Now why wouldn't the joint work correctly? It's an active joint. 
the most active joint in the body, as a matter of fact, and it moves 2,000 times a day at least. Now, some people talk a lot, so maybe it moves more than 2,000 times. But the actions include talking, chewing, swallowing, and yawning. Now, despite it being the most active joint in the body, it has only been within the last decade that it's been widely recognized that the importance of the TMJ dysfunction on the cervical spine and on the body as a whole has been achieved. Remember that triangle we talked about? We had to have balance in the chemistry, the emotions, and the body structure. Well, everything works together. So if the jaw has a problem, it's going to affect the rest of the building. If the neck has an issue, it can affect the jaw as well as the rest of the structure in the building. Now, the joint itself. Here's a demonstration. Here's a little drawing. You'll see this person is looking into me. This is the person's ear. This is the zygomatic arch. These are the muscles that attach to the jaw and help the jaw chew, the masseter and the temporalis muscle. And this is actually a sketch of drawing. We're looking in this way. This would be the left side. And you can actually see there's a little disc between the condyle and the, um, the rest of the joint. So maybe some of you have been to a chiropractor and we've talked about discs between the vertebrae. Well, there's also a disc in the TMJ joint itself. Now, this leads us to the next step of posture and the kinematic chain. Maybe you've heard that saying that the weak link in the chain is the one that breaks under stress. So if there's a weak link in the chain, be it the head, the neck, the jaw, the spine, even all the way down to the feet, well, that's the area that's going to be under stress, duress, and start to cause a dysfunction. So at this point, we're going to leave it up. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to leave that topic for next time, and we want you to make sure you tune in.